Now, have you ever wished you had predator vision? Well, now you can with this Finder S1 series from HSF Tools. Make work safer and easier, say. This is a thermal imager model Finder S1 and made in Vietnam. That's cool. With itty bitty print. It's got a 96 by 96 IR detector, super resolution image enhancement technology, high frequency, 25 hertz, focus free, which just doesn't mean you can't focus on anything, battery free, because it uses the, uh, the power from your type C device, I guess. And the accuracy is plus or minus two degrees. That's pretty dang good. Let's see if we can get this thing out of the box here. Thank you for your purchase. For any questions, concerns, please contact us at hsftools at carve.com.vn. We are here to help. So this particular thermal imager is designed to connect up to your phone, or I suppose any Android tablet, and you gotta scan the little QR code to download the app for it. In fact, I suppose I just need to go ahead and do that now. That QR code takes you straight to the Play Store. We install our thing here. While that's installing, we can take a look at the instructions. Well, I was kind of hoping it would include a little bit more detail in here about the specs of this guy. Well, let's see what's in the case. Oh, wow. This case is gigantic for such a tiny little thing. That's, uh, that's kind of dumb. <laughs> you know, we really only need the case to be about this big, don't we? We really don't need all this extra room. It's like, what for? But yeah, as you can see, that's the little doohickey right there. And just in case you have a really thick case on your phone, this has a little extender that just extends the doohickey up. I wonder if I'm even going to need that though. Let's see if it'll just plug straight in. Yeah, that looks like it plugs into my phone just fine. Since the details in the manual are lacking, I just went ahead and pulled up the Amazon listing for this thing. And as you can see, it's $140, bucks, but they have a $140 coupon right now. So, yeah, that's a good deal, right? Especially for a thermal camera. Yeah, so we have a lot more information here. The heat map has 9,216 points for swiftly identifying hotspots and simplifying detection. It's perfect for cooking, auto maintenance, or home repairs. This compact device ensures accurate surface temperature measurements on various objects. So the actual camera on this thing is 96 by 96 pixels, which, you know, ain't shit. But the super resolution on this thing actually boosts up the resolution to 720 by 720. And the frame rate is 25 hertz, or, you know, 25 frames per second. Here we can see it has a temperature range of negative 4 to 752 and distance range of 0.1 to 15 meters. Yeah, that's a nice mixture of metric and imperial measurements there. Thanks. Oh, it looks like you have two different temperature ranges. I don't know if you have to set that manually or if it sets automatically. It only consumes 0.31 watts. You can set high and low temperature alarms. That's kind of interesting. And it says for optimal image quality use within 6.56 feet. All right, let's take a look at the app here. In privacy policy, they're gonna steal all your data, of course, so agree. Flexible real-time measurement settings. Support automatic real-time monitoring of center, hot spot, cold spot, and flexible custom spot lines. Yeah, okay. Rich preset and custom palettes, uh-huh. High temperature accuracy, yep. Build your image style, ooh, fancy. All right, we're gonna start. Let's plug in the thermal imager. Allow app access to camera, we gotta do that. Oh, we gotta allow this thing to take pictures of me. Ooh, the current version is not available. Update the firmware version first and then install the old version. All right, so we'll update. It's kind of interesting. We downloaded it from the Play Store, but now it's wanting us to download something else. All right, we'll download this other APK from their actual website and see if it breaks my phone or not. So this is fun. It says, unsafe app blocked. This app was built for an older version of Android, which doesn't include the latest piracy protections. Installing this app may put your device at risk. Hmm, what do you guys think? Should I install it anyway? Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, app not installed. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is weird. It says, note, if your mobile device is Android 10, which this is Android 10, please try to install the specific Android package for Android 10. You may see a notification blocking the process if you have installed the app from Google Play. Yeah, which I did from scanning the QR code, which, you know, you would think you would just scan the QR anyway. Then please uninstall the current version first and install the specific APK for Android 10. Well, I thought I'd tried that already, but we'll try that again. And it's kind of freaking weird. Took like three tries, but finally got the app installed. So let's open it and see what happens. Bah, it's working. 
Auto calibration. To ensure temp measurement accuracy, auto calibrate will be performed every tens of seconds, which may cause video shuttering. You can turn off for video fluidity. Okay, so it auto calibrates all the time. Hey, look at me. You can see me on there, huh? That's kind of cool. Oh, and look, you can see y'all too. See if we can get an actual measurement of what I'm doing. Oh, look, it's tracking my hand. You can see the kind of like the little square on it. That's kind of interesting. So I'm guessing normally you're supposed to use this with the little camera flipped around. That actually kind of makes more sense. But you can hit this button up here and it'll give you a little small window showing what your actual phone camera is seeing. This guy up here is auto calibration where you can turn that on and off. Might as well leave that on. You can hear kind of a faint clicking from this thing every once in a while. I think that's the auto calibration where it, it closes its shutter so it can calibrate and then it keeps going. And here we can rotate this guy. Doesn't really need to be rotated at the moment. Although that is probably easier to hold the camera like this. Oh, the app auto rotates. That's fantastic. Okay, I like that much better. Let's see if we can get some measurements going here, huh? Draw a line on the image area, tap the line icon to exit again. So we're reading in Celsius here. Let's see if we can switch. Yeah, temp unit. Let's do Fahrenheit. We definitely don't need Kelvin. Okay, so you can kind of draw a line if you want to measure the temperature in like a certain area. Like right now, I'm pointing right to you guys in the GoPro. And you can see the max is 80, what was it, 87 degrees Fahrenheit? And the min is 77, with the average of 82. That's pretty darn cool. You know, I was having a hard time getting the line to go away. I was thinking you would just hit this button and it would go away, but it doesn't. What you have to do is you have to hold down on the line and it brings up this little menu and then you can change the settings of the line. You can show you your hot, cold and average or you can turn those off or you can hit the little trash can, delete the sucker. It's not really all that intuitive, is it? Here we can take a look at some of the palettes and, you know, kind of go through here. Oh, what is this? Ice fire? Oh, I guess the hottest parts of the image show up as red. Everything else is grayed out. That's kind of cool. Kind of interesting. Well, this is kind of like a more extreme version of it. <laughs> That's kind of neat. You can turn the little scale on and off over there. I kind of like looking at the scale. Man, it's actually showing the hottest part is 113, 120. Is that really how hot the GoPro is running? That's pretty incredible. And then on the image, you can adjust the brightness. Whoa, I, yeah. It kind of doesn't seem to be necessary. Looks fine to me. You also adjust the contrast. You probably don't want to play with the contrast too much because you want to be able to discern all your different gradients here. And color distribution. It's on histogram right now. Let's switch it to linear. Um, huh, okay. I guess that gives you a little bit more of an extreme between the cold parts of the image and the hot parts. And then if you have the color distribution on histogram, it's a little bit more of an average. Hmm, I don't know. Which one do you think is more useful? You can hit this little button right here to take a picture. Let's uh, say hi. Everybody smile. <laughs> That's fantastic. And it looks like, ooh, you can also record video here too. Is it recording? Yeah, wave. All right, that's neat. That's super useful. I like that a lot. Now you're probably wondering what good is a thermal camera for diagnosing stuff on a car, right? Because that, that's what I do on my channel. But these things can be pretty handy for all sorts of stuff. You can find electrical connections that are shorting out or overheating. You can also trace out the lines of your AC system or heater, you know, make sure those are working good. And you know, if you think you have like a brake caliper that's dragging or something, you can just grab this thing and quickly walk around the car and find out which one it is without having to do anything else. Sometimes when certain components go bad, like they'll overheat and this thing will be able to pick that up too. Really, there's all sorts of uses for this thing. And I have one that I want to try out right now. So let's go do that. So I turned the center metering spot on and decided to take a look around my 81 Fiat Spider here. And with that center metering spot on, you can see up here in the corner, it's showing the temperature that it's measuring. So the spider has a misfire and I was kind of hoping something would jump out at me just looking at the uh, screen here. But with the metering spot, I was actually able to see if I take a look at each individual runner on the headers, like each one is around, oh, like 640 or 680, something like that. See, like this one's like 660 right now, but the number three cylinder is over 788. So there's obviously something going on with cylinder number three, because all the other ones are pretty consistent at, you know, around like 650, some, six something. 
Not sure that really tells me anything, but it's definitely an indicator. And I saw that basically instantly using this thing. Just one of those things that you can see like really quickly with thermal imaging. And I'm taking a look at the radiator hoses right now. You know, just kind of seeing what I see. But yeah, I think this thing is a nifty little tool. I'm really glad I picked it up. And if you want one for yourself, there's going to be a link for it down in the description below. About the only negative feedback I have is with the app, it was kind of arduous to get going, but I did get it working, so you can get it working too. I would not even bother with this QR code on the instructions and just go straight to their website. And the other thing is that this case really does not need to be this big at all. I'm going to find something small that I can slip this thing into to just protect it and then stick it in my favorite multimeter case. That way I have it with me whenever I'm troubleshooting things. But other than that, I'm super happy with this little tool, especially for the price. Well, be sure to subscribe if you're not already and give us a thumbs up too. It really helps the channel out. Bye. Thanks for watching. I'll end the video on just some of the exported footage from the thermal imager.